Hey friends, welcome back to Dad's Bedtime Stories. I'm Martin, and tonight we're going to do another story from the Cards of Power series. Uh, it was inspired by two things. The first one was this. Uh, I am Clayton, and I am five. And I would like a story of when, when, uh, when you get to learn electric powers. Clayton, thank you for the suggestion. I think we'll put that in this episode. And also, happy birthday, by the way. Next up, uh, there was another suggestion, and I cannot for the life of me figure out where it went. Did I make it up? Was it in the Google form? Was it a speak pipe message? I've just spent the last half hour trying to find it, but I couldn't. Uh, the idea was basically that you go back to the card shop, you get rid of all the cards you want to, and uh, you get completely ready to battle a gatekeeper. So whoever left me that message, if you could send me another message or an email or something like that, I'll make sure to shout you out on the next podcast. I don't know what, I, I just can't find it. Either way, time to close your eyes, get as comfy as you can in that bed, and imagine yourself doing what the kid in the story does. You wake up on the couch of the log cabin, ready for another day of adventuring. Magnus, seeing that you're awake, gets up, stretches his back and his legs, and then says, Ah, good morning. What are you thinking for today? Well, I thought we better head back to town, you say. We haven't been there in a while. I have a whole bunch of cards that we've collected to trade, and I was kind of wondering if you think maybe I'm ready to battle a gatekeeper. Hmm. Well, you do have me, and I'm pretty awesome. With my new evolved form, I don't think any gatekeeper can stop us. Plus, uh, you've collected some pretty cool cards. Some of them still don't listen to you, but the ones that do are pretty cool. To be honest with you, I think we're actually probably way more than powerful enough to take on a gatekeeper and go to the advanced area. Really? Are you sure? Yeah, and I mean, if you're not, your idea of going to see if there's any new cards, well, it's probably a good one. With that, you and Magnus head out of the cabin. As soon as you leave, you reach your hand back and summon the cabin back into its card form. Next, you call forth your magic wing card. You gently start to float up into the air. Magnus starts flapping his wings and follows beside you. Together, you head up higher and higher into the sky, high above the intermediate area. You head straight towards Turnaround Town, the place with a nice comfy hotel and a card shop. When you get close enough to the gate, you land gently outside of it, you and Magnus walk in to turn around town. You head down the street and go directly for the card shop. As you open the door, the normal bell rings, and you immediately see the card shop owner. Well, it's good to see you. I haven't seen you two in a while. Uh, yeah. We've been finding lots of different magical creatures, you explain. Well, what would you like to trade? Uh, well, you say, I kind of want to get rid of any of the cards that weren't in one of the main episodes of my life. Ah, looking to get rid of the garbage cards. I like what you're thinking. How many do you have? You put down every single one of the cards you can find. I mean, you may not have really thought about it at the time, but on all of your adventures, 
you've captured all sorts of little things. A whole bunch of foxes, some bug-like cards, butterflies, birds, and a surprising number of caterpillar-like creatures. You put all of the cards down on the counter. How much can you give me for these? You ask. Where? For all those, I think I could get about this much. The gatekeeper reaches down below and pulls out a whole pile of money. It's an absolutely amazing number of tokens. A fortune, really, at least to your eyes. Uh, but before we finish business, are you sure there's not anything you would like? The shopkeeper asks. You look around the store one more time, up and down the walls, checking out all sorts of amazing powers. Each one of them is pretty tempting in its own way. You kind of want to collect them all, but... You know you can't. Before long, you come to a section of the store you hadn't really paid much attention to before. A sort of miscellaneous section. One-off cards that you can't find anywhere else. As you look through the section, a certain card captures your attention. It has a picture of a huge clock on it, and it just says, Time. This card grants you basic control over time. At level 1, the card allows you to slow time down dramatically for up to 5 minutes. Whoa. That power would be amazing, you say. Ah, yes. Amazingly expensive, too, the shopkeeper says, changing the tone of his voice to one you're not so sure you like. How much would it be, you ask? The shopkeeper looks down at the huge pile of tokens. He uses his fingers to grab a few of the coins and place them over to the side. Then, he puts his arms around the rest of the pile and pulls it back towards himself. About this many, he says. You ponder for a while if it could really be worth it. Is the ability to slow down time really that powerful? But the more you think about the uses, the more you realize you kinda have to have this card. Uh, I'll take it, you say, grabbing the card and grabbing your remaining change. Good choice, the shopkeeper says. You and Magnus exit the shop once again and head back outside. As soon as you're out in the street, you look down at the time card. You're a little reluctant to put all cards in your core. I mean, after all, there could be a limit or something. But this one, this one is just too hard to resist. You immediately focus on the card and it glows a bright blue color, transforming into energy. You invite the card into your card core and it slams into your chest, sending a surge of power through your body. Once again, you have a newfound sense. A sense of time. As you attempt to activate the card, everything around you looks really strange, really still. Magnus, who was flapping his wings to float beside your head earlier, is now just floating there. No, wait, he is moving. His wings are moving at an incredibly slow rate. You walk around the area at what to you seems like normal speed. Every direction you look, 
people are moving slower and slower and slower. Even stranger, there seems to be something on your wrist. As you look down at it, there's a little clock. A clock ticking down from five minutes. Oh, wait a minute. How many times a day can I use this power? You ask. Realizing that you're literally wasting time, you release the card power. The world returns to normal. The sounds come back, the people start to move, and Magnus spins around to see where you've gone, finding you uh, have walked away much further than he believes you should have been able to in that amount of time. You just used the card core, didn't you? Magnus says. Uh, maybe, you respond. Well, don't waste it. Most cards like that reset themselves every day. If you need it, and you use it all, well, it really won't be much use. Oh, yeah, good point, you respond. Together, you and Magnus look around. You see the old hotel. You haven't visited it in a while. Uh, maybe you should stop there one more time before you face the gatekeeper, you think. And then, off in the distance, past the gate to the intermediate area, there's a huge and very powerful bolt of lightning that shoots out of the sky and sets fire to the ground below it. What was that? Magnus says. You both look in the direction that the bolt came from, and you see little sparks growing in the sky, almost like they're floating around a big orb. The sparks get brighter and more powerful, and the sky starts to get darker and darker. People in turnaround town start running for shelter Oh no, it's a wild magic, one of them yells. Run for the shelter, Betty! As people begin to panic, you see an opportunity. You look at Magnus and the two of you communicate without even talking. You look back at the wild magic and you immediately jump into the air activating your magic wing card immediately. You zoom through the gate back into the intermediate area and directly for the huge lightning storm that only seems to be getting more powerful. Huge and increasingly larger bolts of lightning are shooting out of the little sphere, some of them up into the sky others hitting the outside of the protective dome around the intermediate area, and others hitting the ground. The destruction is absolutely unimaginable, breaking huge groups of trees into little splinters, sending little fiery pieces of wood in all directions. As the lightning hits lakes, it splashes high up into the air, and when it strikes bare earth, it leaves a big crater. Whatever this is, it's really powerful. The only question is, how are you going to tame it? As you get closer, the lightning bolts get closer to you one of them narrowly missing you and shooting the ground beside you. You immediately summon your energy shield. It's probably a better choice than your rock armor to dodge things while flying after all. You and Magnus fly through the air, trying to get closer and closer to the sphere. But the further you try to press, the more wind, or at least something that feels a lot like wind, pushes against you. Almost a gravitational force more than anything else, pushing you in the opposite direction from the sphere. You concentrate as much as you can, and your wings glow bright, pushing you forward bit by bit, but not without effort. 
As you push forward, another lightning bolt shoots directly beside you. It distracts you and suddenly you're pushed away from the strange sphere that's floating in the sky. Uh, maybe we try attacking it, Magnus says. With that, Magnus powers up. He starts to glow and he grows and grows and grows until he's in his evolved form once again. He powers up his hands, his head, the tips of his wings, and his tail. Then he slams them all together and shoots a concentrated burst of heat straight at the dome. The heat goes towards the dome, but before it can hit it, it just kind of stops in midair and then shoots back down towards the ground mixed with bolts of lightning, creating a huge explosion below you. Well, uh, maybe that won't work, Magnus says. As if your actions have angered the wild magic, it starts to shoot more and more lightning, getting wilder and wilder as it goes. And even more worrisome, it starts to shift directions, heading straight towards the gate of Turnaround Town. Uh, is it heading where I think it's heading? You ask Magnus. Yep, Magnus responds. With that, you summon every single card you can think of. Every elemental dragon, an elemental unicorn, fire wombats, fire pandas, lightning bunnies, grass bunnies, and of course the water dragonling. As soon as they appear, they all charge up their most powerful attack and shoot it straight up towards the sphere that's floating in the sky. They look like they're going to hit the sphere, and slowly, every single one of them stops, freezes in air, even the lightning attacks somehow. Then, with another bolt of electricity, they're all sent hurling in the other direction, exploding against the ground and knocking you and all of your magical creatures over. Lightning erupts again and again, and the storm gets stronger. The world gets darker around you, and you're really not sure what you're going to do. Lightning starts to come faster and more furiously than ever before. You look around at all of your magical creatures, and you realize that you have to get them to safety before anything else. You focus on them and call them all back to your card core. Even Magnus. This is no place for them. The lightning's too powerful. Maybe you should just get out of here too, instead of going towards it. But something else inside you kind of calls to you, as if you feel a connection to this energy. As the lightning continues to strike, you decide to try another tactic. The time card. You activate the time card and the lightning shooting in every different direction begins to dramatically slow down. I mean, it is lightning so it still goes pretty fast, but you can now see it move through the air. You activate your wings once again and you start to fly up towards the sphere of lightning or whatever it is. As lightning strikes down towards you, you easily dodge from side to side. They're not exactly slow motion, but they're going no faster than a dodgeball would in gym class. You swoop left, swoop right, and swoop up, in and around every single bolt of lightning that shoots towards you. And, strangely, maybe because you're moving at a much faster speed relative to everything else, it's much easier to fly up to the sphere. 
The closer you get, the harder it is to dodge the lightning because closer to the source, well, the bolts themselves are closer together. You narrowly avoid a few of them, zigzagging left and right and up and down. Soon enough, you make your way towards the huge sphere. Before another bolt of lightning can shoot out and hit you, you reach out and place your hand against it. You close your eyes and you immediately start to concentrate. A weird sensation passes through you, an electrical one, one that starts to make you feel like you're very, very, very alive. You wonder for a second if you really should have touched this giant thing of electricity. Generally speaking, um, it would be something to avoid. But the more you focus, the more you hear the wild magic the more you understand why it's upset. It was just born into the world. It doesn't know where it is or what anything else is. And then you attacked it. That wasn't very nice of you. In your head, you apologized to the wild magic, both for the things you did and for the things you didn't, showing understanding and empathy. Before long, the wild magic starts to feel like it's calming down. The bolts of lightning, still moving in slow motion, begin to slowly disappear. You get a sense that the wild magic forgives you, and... Not only that, it seems to understand you too. It starts to transform into a large ball of pure blue energy. You focus on the energy and you will it to form itself into a card. The card forms in front of you and becomes solid. The power of lightning. This card gives you the power to control electricity. At each level, your control grows, and so does your power. Whoa! Once again, you immediately look at the card, realize how cool it is, and summon it into your card core. You deactivate the time card and find yourself just floating gently above the forest, a forest that's largely on fire. You summon your water dragonling, Aisling, and he flies down to take care of things. At the same time, you activate your lightning card and feel the power of lightning surge through your body. You reach up towards the dome that covers the intermediate area. You allow a bolt of lightning to fire out and connect against the dome. You do the same thing with your other hand. It's sort of difficult to control. You're not quite sure exactly how you're supposed to aim this stuff, but it is very powerful something you will have to practice before fighting one of the guardians. Once your water dragonling's done putting out the fire below you, you fly back down, summon it back, and feel a strange knocking coming from your card core. What is that, you wonder? Oh yeah, you realize. Magnus, he hates being in a card core. You release Magnus once again and he appears beside you. Ah, oh, thanks. I hate being in there, Magnus says. The two of you head back to Turnaround Town, and, partially because one of the listeners suggested it, you decide to head back to the hotel. You haven't been there in a while and, well, you want to check it out. 
You're greeted at the lobby as you enter, and you immediately go to the counter and grab a key to one of the rooms. As long as you're a card holder, they're free. With the key in hand, you head up the elevator and straight to your room. You put the key in the door, open it up, revealing a very comfortable and very nice hotel room. Once again, Magnus immediately plops down on one of the beds, and you jump on top of the other. Tired from a very long battle, and kind of confused from all of your new powers, you lay your head down on the mattress, you close your eyes, and immediately your body just starts sinking down into the mattress. Your arms and legs feel like they're melting. Your face melts into a nice half smile as well. And you just continue to breathe, focusing on your breath and allowing your mind to become centered. Good night, everyone.